Hey, what's up, YouTube? Today I'm going to be going over one of my most requested tutorials. I'm going to be going over Fume Effects Basics. Now, this is like the very basics of Fume Effects. I'm not going to be going over uh, anything involving changing the settings. I'm just going to be going over basic, uh, just the basic principles and some of the uh, tools in Fume Effects. So, um, yeah. Uh, first, before you even start Fume Effects, what I recommend is that you check out this uh, article. It's called The Anatomy of an Explosion, and basically it uh, shows you uh, what an actual explosion looks like shot by shot, and that'll help you make better explosions and not just kind of go about it the wrong way, because it'll actually show you, and it gives a detailed article about every type of... Um, it basically gives you a detailed article about every type of explosion and really like in-depth explanations and this really helped me get good fume effects explosions and fire and uh yeah you can just look at all these pictures they're actually pretty cool but they serve a purpose you can see what real explosions look like not just uh, this is, uh stuff that looks right to our eye but stuff that's realistic okay so without further ado i'm just gonna go ahead and get started with the tutorial so um i'm gonna open up 3ds max here and uh, I'm using Fume Effects 2012, but you can use pretty much any version you. Uh, this should all apply pretty much similarly. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom out a little bit here because uh, when we're making our grid, which I'll go over in a minute, you want a little bit of space. So to uh, be able to get Fume Effects to even work, we're going to be in our standard primitives here under Geometry tab, and we're just going to go down and we're going to hit Fume Effects, and we're going to hit Fume Effects one more time. And now we can see that we have a click and drag uh, pointer here. And when we start dragging out, this will make our grid. And our grid is basically the area that Fume Effects is going to simulate um, our explosions, fire, or whatever you do. Because without the grid, Fume Effects will just simulate endlessly, and that would be impossible because um, it can't just simulate into nothing. That doesn't make any sense if you actually think about it. And I know it probably doesn't make any sense right now, but I you'll get it, what I mean, in a minute. So, uh, drag to make how wide it is, and you can change the parameters later, and then just drag to be how tall it is. And, um, I'm just gonna go over here. And for the width, uh, does what you think it is, it makes the simulation area bigger, so if you're gonna have a bigger explosion and more sources, you probably wanna make it a little bit bigger, but I'm just gonna make mine, uh, 20. And, no, that's stupid. Uh, 100. And I'll just leave the settings, and you can just change that by going up or down. So uh, now, what I'm going to go over is spacing, and spacing, just in simple terms, is quality, and uh, quality is basically, um, y y when you're doing like your first few simulations, you probably, w like when you're doing your first few, you don't need high quality, and if you're just doing some test renders, you don't need it, but uh, the spacing is put on two, but you can, if you want like for your final render, you probably want your spacing on like 0.05 if you have a lot of RAM, a lot of uh, if you have if you have a lot of space in your hard drive. But yeah, so we have that. So now before we start anything, we need to make a source, and there's all sorts of sources, and the source is basically where the explosion and where the fire is coming from. And so we can get our source from a lot of different things. So let's go over to our helpers here and go under Fume Effects again. And we have Simple Source, Particle Source, Fume Effects Source, Gravity Vector, Void Source, and Object Source. But a Simple Source is the easiest to make because you just click and you drag it anywhere inside your sim box. And drag it inside your sim box. You cannot drag it outside because it won't simulate. And make it as big or small as you want to. But uh, yeah, I think making there and you can move it around like any other uh object that you make just move it and uh yeah it's uh you want it about center this is where your explosion or where any of your materials from fume are going to be coming out so now let's just select this grid again and we're going to go back into our helper here not helpers but objects and we're going to open the fume effects ui and if that doesn't work go over here and just open it and now the fume effects UI is open and this is basically where all of the stuff gets done in fume effects and the UI is basically where you can simulate and whatnot okay so now that we have um, our source made and we uh, I'll go over object sources later uh, but we have our source made we can now go and we can change some settings and uh, sorry for that I'm just gonna go ahead and yeah okay so, um, now we can just change all our parameters here, but the first thing you want to do, so that way you can start making uh, simulations, is highlight your source. So we'll just go into this pick object here, and 
pick the source you just made and that'll now be added in there and make sure you use this check it should be automatically be checked and so now you can adjust the settings for fuel temperature and smoke and then in the render settings here we have all the step sizes and um, I'm probably not going to go over in this tutorial mainly just because it can get pretty advanced and depending on what you're doing you want different settings but yeah so just know that all of your tabs are here and now that we have this without any of the settings changed we can already start seeing what um, explosion fume effects is created uh, with the default and so to do that we have this little play button up here and that starts its default simulation so let's press uh, play and it'll simulate and um, yeah now you may notice that there's something a little bit different about mine that you might not notice uh, basically you have to have an output path because FumeFix is rendering its own files and these are basically simulation files and mine goes into a special folder that I made and um, yeah you need to make an output path because it won't do anything if out without it so you just go to this output path over here and make one and so uh, now that we have this uh, simulation made we can open the preview window and let's just make this a little bit bigger and you can change the quality of what you're seeing by just going to quality and now if we go through our frames we can see kind of what we created it's a pretty just really ugly simple kind of plume fireball type thing and it just kind of comes out there but human effects can get really advanced and so right now I'm gonna leave you with just this, this basic knowledge and you can feel free to play around with the settings and once you have something ready just make sure you set the spacing a little bit higher or lower but because you don't want to have to have a really bad quality render but this will you know you need uh, for production level you need uh, probably about 0.5 because that'll sim you know 100 gig but you don't want to do more or 400 uh, megabytes and um, it's going to take about 200 megabytes to render but you know you can see it gets ridiculous when you go like 0.05 0.005 and that'll sim like it's, it's ridiculous so just kind of find your uh, find a find your little medium here and um, yeah uh, just play around with it and um, have fun with fume effects uh, come back with my new tutorial later and uh, if you have any questions or feeling I left anything out or have any suggestions leave them in the comment box and uh, thanks for watching and bye